For any graduates applying to medicine or dentistry in the UK, there is a huge wealth of mistakes and misconceptions that people make with their application that hinder their chances. For medicine, it's already incredibly competitive, 34 applicants to one place. So really we need to make sure that we're avoiding any major mistakes and just nailing every aspect of our application to really stand out and get that place. So in this video, this is actually an extract from a brand new course that I've brought out for teachers and parents to help them help their children get into medicine or dentistry. So there are more details at the end of where you can access the full course. It's completely for free and there are no catches, no gimmicks, just purely there to help the parents and teachers. So if you are applying, no matter what age you are, even if you're in your 30s and above applying, this is something that will still help if you give it to your teacher or parents to help them help you with your application and how they can support you best. So like I say, keep looking at the end to find out more resources to help you with your grad application. But otherwise, here are some of the common mistakes that you should make sure you avoid when applying to either medicine or dentistry as a grad. Enjoy. Myth slash misconception that I want to talk about is around people applying as graduates. Now, as undergraduates, sometimes people think if they don't get the mark and they want to go on and maybe do a biomedical sciences degree that this is the best way for them to kind of not delay and just get a degree and then come back and study medicine later and apply as a graduate. Now this is something that isn't necessarily a given and sometimes I would say possibly a mistake rather than people who maybe take a year out and then reapply again and, and try their chances for a second time. The reason is because once you go from an undergraduate applicant, which has for medicine around at the moment about 16 to 17% chance of getting in, 15% at the moment of filming for dentistry. However, then when you go over to the grad side of the coin, you're going from those percentages to a 34 applicant to one place, so less than 3% chance of succeeding. So people think that it makes sense to go on and do a degree and come back and look at the medicine or dentistry thing later, but I'm telling you that you suddenly take the, those odds and make them much more difficult if you are going for that option. Now, of course, you can understand that people don't want to waste a year. People want to get something out of the time that they're, they're waiting and want to get that degree. And that makes total sense. But from a pure, if, if your goal is to get in and become a doctor or a dentist, and that is all you want, then it is worth considering that it's maybe not a given to go straight into a degree when you could spend that time focusing on a second application. Another area that people get confused often is when they are considered a graduate applicant. Now, there are four year shortened courses for graduate applicants, but also sometimes the graduates apply to a five year course. And if they do that, they believe that they are not a graduate applicant. However, that misconception conception is completely wrong because when you are applying to a five-year course, you are still considered as a grad applicant. So let's look at an example. Let's say Southampton University, and I'm going to simplify these numbers so they're not accurately reflecting the current uh, university places, but let's say that they have a 40 place uh, four year course. So 40 places available for their graduate four year program, whereas they have 200 places for their five year program. Now people think that if they're a graduate that they are applying against 200 people. But actually you can imagine that this is a bit unfair on the undergraduate students, the ones who are coming straight out of A level, probably haven't had time to gain the experience and all of the accolades that a graduate has. So it's very unfair to have them competing against one another. So what the university will do is they will take a small subset, so that could be 10% of those places, and allocate that pool to the grads. So then people are competing for those 20 places. Now, this will depend on the numbers and how it varies, but it's not always a given that the five-year course is easier or less easy to apply to than the four-year cohort. So remember what I said, if you hold a degree, regardless of which one you're applying to, you are considered a graduate applicant. Unless you don't want to use your degree, but then you have to have sat your A-levels within a certain amount of time, which means essentially that you'll have to resit them, then you'll be classed as a mature applicant, and then that creates a whole other different situation, which is a bit more complicated. Now, another thing to consider within all of this is the competition ratios. Let's say that in this example that I gave before, it's not 10% of the 200, but actually 20%. So they have 40 places on the five year course. They also have 40 places on the four year course. But let's say 200 people are applying to this. It's probably gonna be a lot more than that. But let's say that's the number versus 300 people applying to this one. So again, in that scenario, the five year course will still be more competitive. So this is what I mean by it's very nuanced and medical school selection that we're gonna talk about later is a very big part of this 
particularly for grads, but it's not just a given that people will say, oh, the five-year course is easier to get into. Sometimes that's the case, sometimes that's not the case, and we have to be intelligent about where we're applying based on those numbers. Now, one part where the four-year versus five-year course currently does matter is that of funding. So if somebody ha holds a degree and then goes on to do a degree on the five-year course, this is considered a second degree, and therefore they are not eligible for student finance for help with the fees, so they have to pay that out of their own pocket. However, if they're applying to the four-year course, this is considered a continuation of studies and therefore you are eligible for help from student finance. Now, this is all predicated on people being allowed based on their home country student finance policy. I've, it gets quite complicated, so I've made a video that goes into it in depth on YouTube, which I can link to in the description below. Again, this applies to uh, Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So if you are from outside of that, you're an international applicant and you pay uh, international fees which are much higher usually ranging from about 15,000 to 50,000 pounds a year so this whole debate of four year versus five year becomes somewhat irrelevant to the international applicants uh, other than the fact that you have an extra year to pay if you go for the five year course the final myth that I see a lot with graduate applicants is that if the degree that they had prior to applying is a non-science based or humanities based that they are somehow ineligible to apply for graduate medicine that that's simply not the case. There are some universities that do require uh, science-based qualifications for their four-year program, but there are equally lots of programs that take humanities students, and there are a few extra hurdles to jump through for that, but it is still very much possible. Cool, so I hope you found that useful. If you want to find out where you can access the full parent course, like I say, it's completely free. There are no catches. It's just something to help people support their children or, or students when they're applying. Check out this video here for where to access it. Otherwise, if you'd like some more grad specific information, we've got an entire grad playlist here to help you with your medicine or dentistry application. So thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you in one of those videos.